welcome to the last edition of our complete cons of Tarkir set review. We're talking about all the green cards today. That means the Teamer clan. Which the is Teamer's be, the best. It's going to be awesome. I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Brad Nelson. Every single day. And we cannot wait to dive in, so let's get started with Alpine Grizzly. Now look, man. Bears are two twos for two. That's what they are. They are? That's what they are. This is one of those rank cards, though. Yeah, well, and that's fine. But, like, it's just, like, bears are two twos for two. And they're trying to redefine bears as, like, four fours. And you know what? This is a four two. I get that. I'm saying that it's the ferocious. bear token. The bear token Roar. is a four four. That's weird. It's awesome. It's, it's awesome. But, like, you know, they could be, like, dorks. They could have been, like, creature What? Dorks. Goblins have hair. Bears have four power. Let's Fine, get over it. Whatever. Canceling with You're going to play this all the time. It's this, your ferocious enabler. It's super good. It's, like, it's just really good. If you're in green, you want this card. It's a great three drop. Yes, it trades with Morse, which sucks, but it, it triggers all your ferocious stuff. It's super powerful. If you're able to get it through, it's going to do a I whole mean, bunch of damage. Go, the, I can't remember what it was called, but there's the, been the Goblin lately. That's just a 3-2 three, for three. Mm -hmm. And it's really good. Yeah. And I don't care if it can trade. Like, this card is premium green creature. This is going to be played a lot. Like, played in your sills, played in your drafts, take yeah. it high. It's it's very good. It's good. It's aggressive. It does what you want to do. Yay. Awaken the Bear. Also, it's good. It's aggressive. It does what you want to do. You're going to play it in sealed. You're going to play it in draft. You're going to draft it highly because it's a great pump spell. It even gets some trample, which is even better because you have all these huge monsters, and now they can just get to you know bowl over who's ever in front of them. It's awesome. This is, like, one of the best giant growths ever. Except giant growth. Except giant growth. It's yeah, way better. But it's yeah, okay. three mana for giant growth is a little expensive, but it's fine when uh, morph is involved because everyone's afraid of morphs and you just have this giant growth effect. Uh, but giving trample is great with big creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, it's like attack with my three three, and they like block with my four four, and you're like giant growth, and I, I all this miss damage. Right. Where this one just gives the trample. It's really good. It's relevant. It's powerful. It's good. It's playable. It's you know, it's like there's not a lot to say about it. I mean, it's not gonna hit constructed because only giant growth hit constructed that mm -hmm. one time in that one format that where it was like good in for like four seconds, thanks to that guy. That's right. That's right. You're good at standard, gi Brad. I got Deal giant growth a Grand Prix trophy. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So, Giant Growth can withhold, you know, can hold up Grand Prix trophies. This guy won't unless it's a limited GP, in which it might. That's very true. It's very good. Dragon Skill Boon, very good. Good pump spell. Yeah, it's a great trick. Um, it's great at, like, making a morph get a couple counters. It's great at uh, helping all the Abzans just get their, like, one guy gets online. He can get, like, two abilities. And it's really good at making that kangaroo-looking dude freaky. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I just don't want to see it in the back alley, though. He's a freaky looking doggy kangaroo dude. It's the exact opposite of Invisible Stalker, because if mm. it's dark, you you know he's glowing, he's coming. Like, you can <laughs> see him from a mile away. <laughs> but it's really good. You know, it is a sweet trick. It's basically able to for you to kind of either trade up or just completely blow out whatever attacker they got coming yep. in. And a lot of cards uh, in the set want counters on them, so this is a great way to do that. Yep, and then, but there's other cards, like we saw the red removal spells, that actually hate on this type of card, where you're able to, because it now has counters on it, it's able to do more damage. Yeah. Which is interesting. You're going to be able to, instead of kill the 3-3 three, three before the tag, you can be like, it resolves. Kill it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, whatever. It dies. Thanks. Pretty cool stuff. Archer's Parapet. I love this card. I think this card is super cool. It's exactly what Obzon wants to do. I mean... It's just perfect. Like, you want to just sit back, into your turn, lose a life. Okay, great. Untap. All my guys outlast. I keep on my wall. Go. Into your turn, you lose a life. You know what I mean? Like, this lets you set these things up. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a card that forces the opponent to be proactive mm -hmm. uh, because they just, there's a ticking time bomb. Yeah. Uh, they're not cards you want a ton of. Sometimes they're situational. Like, you might want them in certain matchups. Um, <clears throat> five toughness with this ability is going to be relevant. But this isn't a set with, like, Evolve. So it's it's not that relevant as a two drop. Like I think the other the O six wall is a little bit better. Right. Uh because this card can't let you go on the offensive except for its ability. But um I mean, you know, ultimately, I wouldn't be completely unhappy with two of these or signing in more of these uh, against the aggressive decks yeah. where it obviously shines the brightest. But the fact that this gives you such inevitability is super powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. And I love that. And I think that's really cool. Hardened Scales. Man, you want to excite a commander player, show them this card. They're like, huh? Turn one? And you're like, yeah, turn one. They're like, 
<laughs> and then like a little pee comes out, like you know, like, they get they get really freaking excited, and I love that. You know, what I mean, this yeah. is this is just a card that's made for them. It's a card that shines in those formats. If it can actually make constructed, I would be absolutely shocked. It potentially could, for the fact like it works really well with uh, a lot Evolve. of cards in the set. Yep. It works well with Evolve. It works really well with uh, Heroic. Yep, it really does. So you know, they made it as cheap as they could. This so is, potentially it could see some play. Right, because again, they pushed it as hard as they could. Like, this could have been like a two or three man enchantment. Yeah. No problem. Would have done absolutely nothing and constructed ever, and no one would have said much else about it. But the fact that they pushed it as far as they could go, and the fact that there was an entire mechanic around plus one, plus one mm -hmm. counters in the last block, you know, means this card could be way more interesting than it currently, than it would be in any other format. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Could be cool. Now, the question is, is it worth limited play? Like, you're going to be an OBS on. If you have a bunch of Outlast creatures, obviously yeah, this thing I, is really sweet. I, I think it, given how, how many, like, OBS on charms you have or something, like, this card could be a complete blowout. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, you have to have, like, 12 cards that go along with, with counters to make this even close to relevant. Right, otherwise it's just not playable. Yeah, it's, if, it, if it only benefits, like, five or six cards in your deck, like, it's going to... It's just going to sit there a lot. Right. And like it might, it, and the thing is, is that if it only benefits that few cards, like when your opponent sees you playing an Outlast card, they're going to kill it. Like yeah. immediately. You're just telling them sort of how to play at that point. You're like, anything that has a plus one, plus one counter on it, you need to take care of immediately. Yeah. Or who could put one on itself. Become immense. This card is awesome. This is really sweet. My Pump God, spell. this thing is pushed. This is a card that I would not be surprised if it sees constructive play. It's Me actually, either. it's there's, amazing. There's, I'm not going to lie, whenever spoiler season comes around, I spend a lot of time thinking about magic cards in the shower. You know, I'm sorry to put well, that visual out there, but... <laughs> eye bleach! I, I, Brain bleach! Car, car rides to work, uh, showers, like... Look, man, you're just describing every magic player ever. Like, okay, sure, we okay, think fine. about magic all the time. We think about magic when we're in our car and we're doing nothing, we're talking to our buddy, we're texting them on you know our phones or whatever. Like, this is a super sweet card. Yeah, but I, I thought about it, and I think that there could be a deck where this complements the the green delve decks, where you're not trying to delve with like Murder's Cut, mm -hmm. but you're trying to do other things, like uh, Return to the Ranks, along with uh, like Seder. I think, um, what's it called? Uh, Wayfinder, Seder Wayfinder, Seder Wayfinder yep. is going to be uh, really good in this this current format. Sure, I think a lot of decks are going to want to play it. It gets you lands, it generates a creature, it can block, uh, but Become Immense seems powerful in that kind of a deck. Oh my God, and one green, green for plus damage. six plus six is amazing. Also, this is like the anti Pelucranos card, right? Like they're like fight your one one, and you're like bam, bruh, what? Deal with it. I mean, you know, like it's awesome. I just. It's just, it's so mind blowing that for just up to one green mana, which generally is what you're going to want to spend for it, I mean, that is an amazing pump. It's just plus six, plus six. Literally never games. seen anything like it. No, it's, it's brilliant. Not since like Might of Oaks or something, and that was four mana, no discounts ever. Yeah. And I, I could definitely see this card seeing constructive play. I don't know exactly where, right. but uh, it is one of the most pushed giant growth effects, mostly because you don't really need to do it in the early turns anyway. You want to do it around four or five, and you, if you have a low land count, that means a lot of your cards are interacting and dying anyway. Right. Now, it's been a many years, but, like, you know, Mind of O's did see a little bit of constructive play yeah. for a little while. Like, it's not... I mean, this card, seriously, is like it's good enough to do serious damage to your opponent. I mean, particularly in Limited, where you pick this thing early, often, and play it always. But in Constructed, I would not be surprised at all. Yeah. The card is awesome. Feed the Clan. The card is not awesome. No, this is the... Uh... <laughs> The Heroes Reunion, this is the speech where life gain is not ever good. Oh, Just man. We're going to do that one again? We're going to run it back? We're we always run, run it back. back. We always There's do. There's always like a landfall gain a million life. There's a... <laughs> You know what? I'm just happy we're never wrong. We've right. never been wrong. You know what? You we, know, that's our new argument. We've never been wrong on effects like this. Yeah! We've been wrong about pretty much everything else. That's fine. It's whatever. But this effect, but we this have never one, been wrong. We're batting a thousand, ladies and gentlemen. It's terrible. Don't touch it. It's just, you know, it's one of those where it became, like, there's so few bad cards in this set. When you see this card, you're like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. They make bad cards, too. Oh. I mean, it's... I mean, for me, like, I like the picture. I think, you know, the story of the card is cool. That's why it kind of exists. You know, A, you need bad cards for good cards and yada yada. And B, it lets them kind of tell a story. Because if the card's going to be bad, you better make it flavorful. Well, they also just, it's like the joke of magic, right? Like, every single set always has a game like 10 life. Yep. And every time it's like, it's bad. It's, it's seriously bad. bad. New players like it more than older players because new players think their life total is the end all be all. Life it's is not. the most useless resource in magic uh, uh, until you're dead. Yep. 
Because you can win at one life. You can never win on one permanent in like constructor. You can't be stuck on one land, right? But you can yep. be stuck at one life and still win the game. Yep. So it do, it's not relevant. Oh well, moving on. Hooded Hydra card is an absolute bomb and limited. Yeah, and I don't know. I feel like this is like a card that could see constructor play. I think it's really close. I think it's very close. It's it's probably the problem is is like I think Genesis Hydra just sits on top of it, and that's yeah. like the, the the huge issue is like bringing out a mythic Hydra right before that. It's like. They made the better Hydra already. Yeah, and, and that's that's the big concern. But at the same time, it's a morph that flips over into a 5-5. Five five, and when it dies, you get a bunch of snakes. And that's really cool. And, and that's uh, really relevant. You know what I mean? Like, you want the staying power of those tokens. Like, you don't lose any power in the process uh, of them getting rid of your hooded Hydra to start with. Yeah, I mean, I want to build the deck that has, like, Hornet's Nest and this and Perforos and all oh, of the cool man. stuff. Yeah, and, like, yep. the Court of Calling deck. It's, like... Flip this over, block your thing, get five tokens, court of calling something, and like, right. I think there might be a really bad constructed deck that you try to make work for months and months and months. <laughs> that you bash your head against the wall, yes. feel the love of the tier 2.5 deck, and yeah. suffer against, you know, Sark and the Dragon Speaker or whatever. Yeah, but this card is close to being good. Uh, we'll have to see how the format plays out. I do think that uh, it will see some constructive play, though. It's got a good possibility. Mm -hmm. And again, limited all-star, pick it early, it's amazing, always play it. Heir, to the, Heir of the Wilds, this is a really interesting card. Let's talk about constructive playable cards. I'm, I like this card. I think it actually, you think it's constructive playable? Yes, very much so. Yeah. You play it on turn two, you attack, you just play Boonsetter and attack for three on turn, turn Bam. three. Bam. It's also a death toucher, so like you're not. You know what's the problem with a lot of the early creatures? Sylvan carry to just encourse her life at them, but this one gets through. It's true. And uh, I I've never seen a two two for two that already had death touch that can become a three three. That's really relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, another card a lot of people are just not talking about her is Boon Sitter. I think Boon Sitter is going to be very good in the format. I agree. Uh, it works really well with Rattleclaw Mystic. The the green decks have needed a two drop. Um, Yes, Fleece Main Lion's good, but that doesn't mean you don't have to be two colors. Well, there. then like, you have you to be green, be green and white, right? Exactly. Or you can be green and red. Aspect, like, of, aspect of Hydra is still a magic card, and I think it's still a very good magic card with Boon mm -hmm. Seder and this and some other aggressive cards. Sure. I mean, you know, this guy is, is he's solid. He's very good. Now, in limited for what it's worth, always play this, always. Pick it early. It's very good. Yeah. So, and, like, because, like, if you hear us, like, if the card comes up and we start immediately talking about Constructed, it's already good and limited. Yeah. Like, and if it's not, then we kind of bring up the, the kind of weird, you know, scenario of like it's really good and constructed, but it's bad and limited because of these reasons. But either way, card is very solid. I like it a lot. Yeah. Super sweet. Long shot squad. I love the art. This art is amazing. I love the the dog dudes. Yeah, it's the hounds. The hound archer. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a great art. It's a great card. A doggy shoot an arrow. Yeah, giving giving the ability to have reach on Outlast is great because like, and and I love that like this card doesn't already have reach, but he gives a card that's already untapped with a counter reach. Right. So if they're trying to fly, you're just like, all right, pump this. Now this is going to be able to block your flyer. And yep. It's super cool. You know, this is one of those sort of mainstay. Uh, you know, four mana, three three creatures that has a sweet ability. Outlast is great on it. It just works perfectly with the with the Obzon clan. It's it's beautiful. I love yeah. this card. It's super good. Play it in all your green decks. Pick it early. You'll love it. It's good. Highland game. Now this is at least better than the blue one. Well, obviously, because <laughs> well, it does something. But it's also in the better color. Um, and, but you know, who knows with Jeskai being as aggressive as it is, um, whether this is good or whether this is is you know. Yeah, much worse it, than that one. Who knows? It, this is one of those cards that you play when your job is to. Uh, I don't want to use the word. Uh, now I just want to say at last, but not at last. But, oh. but have, have a better game later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have the have the late game where you you want the life gain, you want the early trades, you want to be able to put all your counters on your guys. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I was reading Tom Ross's article where he was talking about the pre-release, you know, and he, there's a few sort of you know tips and things he was giving people and. One of them was always play your two drops. Like your two power two drops are really good. They're always good. They're always on curve. You always want to hit them. Like being able to go two drop into, you know, turn three, two drop, go. Like you're still, you're building your board. You're putting pressure on people. It is powerful. It doesn't really matter that much that this get, gains you two life randomly. Yeah. Like who cares? And if it trades for a morph, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's like almost the best thing. And, and yeah, that's the value is like people are going to play morphs and morphs you're, you still have to interact with the opponents just because you're more if you want to want to flip over like later yeah it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean they're good yeah and and you're gonna have to interact it's still magic like if i go guy 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 and all you have are your morphs they're gonna have to interact with my guy so like i can just as long as i'm getting to be aggressive they're they're forced to like trade those off 
Yep, absolutely. So this isn't like a super high pick or anything in limited. It's just that in sealed you should play it because you need two drops and two drops are good. And in limited, if you're trying to fill out your curve, you know you need two drops. This is your two. Yeah, drops. but this is the this card is going to be better in a deck that has a late a better late game mm -hmm. than the ones that are just trying to win the game right away because its ability is so relevant when you're trying to uh, build a superior board position later later sure. on. Sure, two life is relevant. Incremental growth. This <sighs> card is a bomb in limited. This is so good. It's not incremental blight. It's not cone of flames, but it is so close to both of them because it, it it's so good with the outlast mechanic. Even without that, it's it's a great teamer card because you can just start getting ferocious online. And I mean it. If you go guy 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 into incremental growth, your opponent is just dead. It's Tra just done. Travel prep defined Innistrad limited. Yes. And this is very close, if not. I mean, I think it's not as good, sure. but it's close to as good. It's I mean, it's close. six power for five mana, distribute on your whole team. One of your guys that's not relevant, he's relevant. Yep. One of your guys that's close to relevant, he's relevant. The one that's already relevant is more relevant. Oh, and man. And now all of a sudden, your entire team is bigger than your opponents, and your opponent <laughs> has to deal with all three of them. The card so good. is bonkers good. This is a, a slam first pick. Now all you care about is your curve. This is your five drop. Hope to find another five drop because now all you want is two drops, three drops, and four drops. Like this is the card A, you first pick it, and B, if someone passes you this card, you are 100,000% positive they're not in green. Yeah. I mean, like a million percent. The only reason you see this past you and they're in green is because they got a foil one. Or they got like a, a bomb teamer card or something. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe the 6-6 six, six Tramble Hexproof yeah. guy is what you would take over this. I mean, you know, you basically it has to be mythic status in order for you not to take this card because it is so crazy good. Yeah, it's... Play it and you will see. It's awesome. Kintree Warden. I like this card because it kind of gives you, um, you know, it is an Obzon card and I think it's very much an Obzon card because it just kind of holds the fort. It just stays there and stops you from dying. That's its job. I like that. And it's a unique card because it's like, it's one of those tricky morphs. Mm -hmm. Like, you can like, they think like you're going to flip over a big monster and they're going to flip over a big monster and they do it and you're like, all right, three mana, right, regenerate, whatever. yeah. It's cool that the same amount of mana to morph it is the same amount of mana to both flip it and regenerate, regenerate yeah. I think that's really awesome. So this is a card that, you know, uh, you kind of have to build your deck around it, you know what I mean? Like if you're in sealed, you want to be like the Ob's on Outlast, mm -hmm. you want to you work for the late game. You know, this is not an aggressive card by any means, so if you're going to draft it, you're also going to draft it in sort of a control yeah. strategy, a slower deck, because all it wants to do is to stop you from dying. This isn't going to win you the game, it's just going to make you not lose. Yeah. That's and that sometimes wins you games. That's right. Meandering Tower Shell. What in the hell is this thing? I don't know. All I can guess is, because it says meandering and it leaves play, I feel like this is like a city or something, or people live on this turtle, and uh -huh. it just gets lost. Like, I feel like it's really dumb at navigation. Like, its uh, GPS just isn't working. It's, like, not updated. It's like a weird joke. I don't yeah. understand. Uh, and, and, and it makes the rules bad. What the hell? I mean, it's a... it's You know, there's that big chart that shows you every power and toughness and magic, and there's holes all over it, you know? Yeah. And you're just like, oh, they needed a 5-9. You know, like, they were just, like, they were just, like, checking off a box, and they're like, what can we do with this thing? And, and you know, someone's like, I can make it weird as crap, and they sure did. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so here's, here's, here's the question I have, and you guys uh. can answer this if you can. Uh, I could have talked to a judge, but I'm not sure. So you know how when, like in Obsidot, you forget to bring it back, right? And mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot to bring my Obsidot back. And then the opponent's like, okay, fine, it can trigger or whatever. And it comes back immediately, right? Yeah. That's how Obsidot works? Yeah. How does this card work? Because if you forget it at a different time... I mean, it's, it's a missed trigger if you miss it on the attack I, thing. Like I know, but it's a missed trigger, but like it's, it can only come back into play tapped and attacking. Right. Well, I mean, if you miss the trigger, you miss you it. You just wait next turn? Yeah. Well, I mean, at that point, it's just gone. It can't be gone forever. Why not? Because that's not how cards work anymore. Well, it only triggers once. The next turn? Yeah, at the beginning of the next of the declare attacker step on your next turn. So if you miss that trigger, then it's it's, you're just, it's out forever. It's just, it's just wandering away. It just meanders. It meanders away. It meanders <laughs> forever. I mean, ultimately, in limited, a five mana five nine with Island Walk is good. It's not. It's not a bad magic card. It's like it's a great wall. It's going to sit there and stop everything. And at some point, you're probably going to attack with it, as long as you're not going to die the next turn when it's not there. Yeah. And you're going to be able to get in a swing later. It's just. It's the. It's just weird. Nothing about this card makes any sense. 
and I don't know why it's there. I don't get it. It's weird. Yeah, I have no idea. It is really weird, but it's fine. It's still playable. I'm not saying it's unplayable. I'm just no, saying it's, it's, it's just weird. I don't care. Naturalized, baby. Woo woo. Yeah, we got Shatter, shatter Naturalized. You know what? Set. I miss Disenchant. Yes, I do too. But Disenchant, I think, is the most powerful of all of them because it's like the card. Oh, oh it's white. Yeah, white white should not have that good of a card. But it did, and it was awesome. I know. It sees, it sees more like it's played than Naturalize or Shatter. As it should. But yeah. no, I mean, like, Naturalize is the correct color. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, it's not that I'm over here going, like, Disenchant is, like, the true version. Like, no, Naturalize is the actual yeah. true version. It's just they didn't know what they were doing when Magic first came around. So, okay, Naturalize. Don't play it. Pine Walker, five mana, five, five. Yep, yep. And it's even got like a sweet like Trixie ability. Oh, this this card, this card is, is awesome. Unbelievably good. So good. Like not only can you not get blown out during your combat, like if they block, you just flip it over, untap it, mm -hmm. and get their guy and you have a defender. But it's like that super awesome, like when they attack you and you just get a unmorph it, untap, block. Woo woo! Nothing feels better than when a creature gets to untap and block their thing. It's so good. It's, it's the so best. Good. It's you feel good about it. It makes you feel good. It makes them feel bad. I mean, there's it's just a whole. You satis feel like a master. It's, yeah, it's just a satisfaction that it's yeah. just hard to get anywhere else. And this card is just it's baked right in. It's like looking at a Christmas present and knowing what's inside of it without <laughs> any clue. You just like shake it and you're like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know what it is. Yep. It's a helmet. There's a bike outside. Woo -woo. Figured it out. Sure did. And this is the bow on top. By Walker, super good. Take it early. Play it always. Card is fantastic. Rattleclaw Mystic will define our standard format. Mm. I think it will be one of the most defining cards of the format. I think. Really? It, yes. Because it ramps in all the right ways. Like, this card was super pushed. Like, they wanted this card to be one of the best cards in Standard, and I think they got there. I mean, it does do a lot of cool things. It's good in green decks. I, I think that it's tough to build with this card in non-green decks yet, and we'll figure it out. Well, I mean, you know, it's funny, actually. I think, as I recall, uh, for Return to Ravnica, the buy a box promo was Sylvan Carrying. Mm -hmm. And this is the buy a box promo for... And so was, so was Goblin Ravnica Master was a buy a box promo, uh -huh. too. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, no, there's certainly true. precedent, and, all, and I mean, I just, I just know the power of this card. You know, the fact that you can get, you know, turn one Elvish Mystic, turn two this face down, turn three you have up to what six mana, like I, with a I, land drop. I, that's I will crazy. Say, I will say one thing. That's crazy. I did build a mono white devotion deck with four of these. Nice. I have it on my computer just for the fact that you can play turn four Elspeth. Sure. You just play, play a two drop on turn two, turn three more, turn four, play this with a with your fourth planes, and you have a turn four Elspeth. Define the format. And, yeah, it is probably going to be very good. And it's such a feel-bad because your opponent, like, will sometimes just want to kill it even though they know it exists. Even though, <laughs> you could just, like, say, I'm going to play this more. Mm. <laughs> and they're like, I, I know what it is. I have to kill it still. Well, I mean, based on what I've seen, at least from the set so far, this is the number one thing your opponent's going to expect when you play this face down. If you play a Morphin Standard, they're going to expect it to be Radical. Yeah. Just because it's so good. Because it just ramps people. It ramps a mono white. It ramps anything. It ramps mm -hmm. anything beyond what it sh sort of should be or, you know, ultimately expected to be. So, obviously, Unlimited, crazy great. We'll always play it. You can't not enjoy this card. Take it super early. It's fantastic. This card also, uh, and I don't want anyone to answer it. I don't want you to answer it. Oh. Um, Dude, I'm going to answer it. I don't. I have I have looked at the art once or twice. Here like, we go. Like, but I've never actually really explored it. And this is my Tarmogoyf card. This is the card that I'm waiting until I get bored while playing Magic and then finally look at it to figure what it uh, is. Because Tarmogoyf, I never actually knew what the art was. So to me right now, it looks like some big monster with claws. And I, I'm not going to look at it. I'm just going to wait. I don't know what the art is. You ever seen Spaceballs? Nope. God, really? Get some culture, you I've never ape. even seen Star Jesus. Wars. <laughs> We're still friends, really. God. This is a lot about Spaceballs because will I get it if I haven't seen Star Wars? N yes, you don't like Spaceballs. The guy who played Darth Vader was Rick Moranis, and he had this ridiculous Darth Vader helmet. Yeah, and it looks very similar to the shape of this. Thing oh no, no, it's, it's a guy. Oh, Why'd you ruin it? Yeah, I see. I both gave him culture. Oh, that's his hand. And oh. ruined it. Culture and ruin <sighs> together, married, hooting mandrels. It's very good and limited. This is a fantastic limited card. 
It yeah. is powerful. It triggers ferocious. It's, it's just good. It's in the early game. It's probably a five mana four four, and in the late game, it can be as cheap as you want it to be. Yep, it can be. I mean, you know, yeah. two mana for a four usually four trade sure. Yeah, you're usually not gonna. I mean, you can actually theoretically trade twice on turns two and turn three. Mm -hmm. So then on turn four, it's a four four. Yeah. Uh, but usually it's gonna be a five mana four four, and then for the rest of the game, it gets cheaper. And th those effects are sweet and limited. Yep, and it's just super powerful. There's not, you know. Unfortunately, these cards are very straightforward. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a good beater. Uh, you're going to play it in all your green decks because it can be as little as one mana uh, yeah. super late. Otherwise, it's still good. Even if you decide to play full price, like a 4-4 Trampler is still great and limited so, every time. I don't think it will hit Constructive Play, but I think this card could actually hit Constructive Play. If you really? Think about it, yeah, because Communion with the Gods inside of Wayfinder make it a 4-4 four, four, four for 3. Uh huh. And it's just one colored. Like, it's just a green card, so it's not like a different color. You know, I I'm wouldn't say, rule out anything. Yeah, I'm just, not ruling this card out. I'm not saying that there's a very good chance of it. Sure. And that it's, like, going to be right away. But, but it's not the craziest this has idea. has the stats for those cards. Because you can just go Seder Wayfinder, get a land, put three into the yard, and then on turn three, just play this as a 4-4. Four, four. Right. Obviously, ramping into Plukronos is better and all these things, and I'm not I'm not arguing those things. But this card could be in a dredge deck just as the mid-range beater. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I can see it. It's cheap. It's cheap. Sagu Archer. Because mm, they're not snake people. They're not snake people. They're Naga. And that's not cool because Kamigawa Block. Kamigawa Block had snake people. They were super cool. I like the snake people. It was awesome. And now they're Naga. They can't just be snake people. They can't be snake warriors or well, snake yeah, archers like they used to. Like always, they're supposed to be. We can't always top 64 Grand Prix in no. every format. <laughs> well, the one I did. Was or awesome. Kamigawa. You know why? Because I did really well in it. That's with snake why. people. Yeah, I actually did really well with ninjas. Um, ninjas. I drafted mono blue ninjas as my last deck in that. That's really ironic because you were the least sneaky person I've ever met. Thanks. Except for me, maybe. Well, um, I, I, he doesn't play so much anymore, but you remember Star Wars Kid? Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, I played him in my last round. Ooh. Of that tournament. Yeah. You know, we were playing for money or whatever, you know, and I just remember so clearly he was so pissed. He was like, I'm losing to this clown. <laughs> <laughs> and he never had to say it. You know what I mean? You just feel it. And you're just like, mm-hmm. I just had the perfect answer. I had perfect ninjutsu. I had everything I needed to just beat him to death. It wasn't even close. That's awesome. It was awesome. Anyway, Saga Archer, the 5 out of 2, 5 reach. It could morph. It can surprise the Jess guy who are attacking into you. Yeah. This is a very good card. It's, it's you know, like, again... As we've been talking about, this card, this set is so full of like good cards, not great cards, not terrible cards, just good cards. This is a good card. You're going to enjoy playing this. It's going mm -hmm. to sneak up on your opponent almost every time, and that's awesome. Yeah, it's one of those cards that's going to lose value as the format evolves. Like it's it's like Restoration Angel and Constructed. You're just going to get them for the first three weeks. And then sure are. They're slowly. It's slowly going to get worse. Right. But it's so good right away. I mean, mm. I'm going to get caught by this card because there's so much to think about. It's like yeah. there's a million morphs. What could that one be? Uh, attack you, I guess. And they're like morphing up. I'm like, all right, whatever. Ah, and then your wind scout dies and you're yeah. just feeling super terrible. But whatever, because that's why this card exists, so you can have the answer to those flyers. Yeah. The card is good. Savage Punch punching a bear in the Straight face. in the face. <sighs> all I got to say. I'm going to punch a brand in the face. All I got to say is I don't think you could ever fight a bear without at least getting one hug in. <laughs> so you just gotta sneak one hug got, in, right? Yeah, he's like, you're you're like bro, hug it, yeah. hug it out. Oh, yeah, bro. You gotta good. bear hug it. <laughs> that's, that was the of joke. Of course you do. That was the joke. I know. Well, that was it. Was almost unspoken, so which that's <laughs> kind of makes it funny. And then he said it. it well, you said bro hug. Well, that was this this hug. This hug was a bro hug. You what? you bro bear hug. Oh, I mean, you know, like it's a, still a bear no, I hug. I just get all in. Oh, there. for God's sake! You're just like <laughs> you're like dissecting my joke and just killing it. You're just like it's bleeding all over the just table. Just like right that now. bear. It's just dying. Like that bear. Like that bear. Yeah. Now look, I don't know if this really lives up to the art. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is one of those where like they had this like the art director had this crazy idea. You know, and he's like, I think this is going to be cool. And it comes back. It's like one of the best, most iconic pieces of artwork of the entire oh, set. Yeah. And they have to stick it on a random fight card. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Like this thing, it, it kind of deserves like, you know, this mythic, I mean, awesome, it's not as bad as badass the, I mean, to be fair, it's not as bad as uh, in uh, in Theros Block, the, uh, the card. I don't remember the name of it because it was so irrelevant. 
uh, that said double the counters on cars that had counters, but it had like one of the most iconic pieces of arts, like Elspeth and Ajani, like just chilling yeah, yeah, with like yeah, an yeah. army behind them. Yeah. And it's on a card that's just completely unplayable. Yep. The only person that ever played it was uh, Sean Plot <laughs> in the. Uh, Oh, in the, in the community, community cup, cup? yeah, nice. that's the only person that ever played that card. There you go. You know what's the best? I, I, I know this is off on a weird tangent, but my favorite is that. So they did that the uh, the build a deck around uh, flavor. Yes. And a lot of people had sweet flavor, but there's no way Sean plays that much magic mm -hmm. for the fact that his deck had a cards that every card said hero, and that's because he just typed hero. Yeah, he literally just and went then he just put search every card hero. <laughs> yeah, and put every card that had hero in it. Wow. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. I know, it was awesome. But it, it's just funny. I mean, you can just tell those who kind of know the game and don't know the game. Uh, this yeah. this spell is good. Like, the reason we can talk about the art so much is, like, ultimately, you want to fight card. With Ferocious, it's nuts, honestly. It's just it's just destroy target creature uh, a majority of the time. Well, it's also, it's like uh, Hunt the Hunter mm -hmm. in the sense that sometimes it's awesome, like, as a limited card. Uh, it was great and limited, but I could see it being a sideboard card potentially. potentially. Where it's just, like... I get this bonus, and I fight that, and then I get the power to attack you. Right. And that's a huge swing. So, like, yes, this can fight a 3-3 versus 2-2, but when you have Ferocious, getting the plus 2-2 plus two can change the whole damage clock. So what you're saying is when you have the 4-5 Tarmogoyf and they have the 4-5 Tarmogoyf, pump the Tarmogoyf and kill No, it, you just cast a Brock 2-K and, and then attack. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. So close. Roar of Challenge. Roar! This is an awesome card. Mm -hmm. It it uh, it's not as good as a lot of the other ones that have been printed prior, like the uh, the noble query or whatever the bestow card, yeah, or um, other types of lure effects. But it, it ends games. Like, it does end games. This that's is the, the cool green thing. way to end games. This is the teamer. Like I have a bunch of dumb green idiots, and I don't know how to attack through. This is it. Like yeah. the the ferocious. Uh, mechanic feels like the deck that gets behind on board, right? And there's like you just are slow to the to the to the right. But once like all your dudes board, are set up and you have these huge monsters, you need a blowout card, right? You just blow them out. And oh my god, if you have a death touch guy with this thing, woo, a big one, it's delicious. Yeah. Like yeah, you know, if you have power of a death toucher equal to the number of creatures they control, and you have four more power on your board, GG's people, we're all done here. So this certainly has blowout potential. It's not quite uh, as blowouty ish um, uh, as probably the uh, the the first strike enchantment no. that you can play in instant speed, which is fine. But that's okay. Like we need these types of cards in Magic and particularly in limited environments because you have to end the game at some point. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're just like, just everyone blocks the stupid one one and kill you. That's what it's for. Scout the borders. So okay, I understand that Grizzly Salvage was very pushed. Yep, but this is this is insulting as a as a well, as a graveyard an connoisseur. Oh, oh, it's a graveyard mm, <laughs> connoisseur. Mm. I was not pleased with my graveyard last game. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not. I, I, my, this is not the enabler. Monocle I wanted. adjustment. This is not the enabler I wanted for for dredging. Uh, they don't want to make the enabler shouldn't be too good. You know, you know, it's probably started out as an instant. They were just like, wait a minute. I mean, it probably just started out as grizzly salvage. To be honest, oh, <laughs> this is awesome. But, you know, it, this, it feels a little bit powered down, and that's probably for a good reason. You yeah. know what I mean? You don't really want Delve to go completely nuts, because if Delve goes completely nuts, that means they're paying one mana for 4-4 four, four yeah. Tramplers and two mana for 4-5 Flyers with ridiculous abilities and all this other stuff. So, you know, this card certainly allows you to kind of speed ahead through your yeah. Delve cards. And if you've played a bunch of Delve cards, you're going to be drafting this, you know, at some point. But it's, it's so bad, like, you're going to be able to get it, like, on the pass outs. I mean, I don't think that's true. I think this... Uh, Think really? So? No, it really enables uh, the delve mechanic. At, at the same time, being able to search for, I mean, because delve exists and there's so many cards that want it, like this can not only get you a land when you need a land in your opening hand, but it can get you a spell. So right. it can be either or. So it's like a, for, like it, for investment for three mana, not only do you put four cards in your, five cards in your graveyard, including cards. this card, mm -hmm. uh, but you get your fourth land drop or more creatures. And, and five cards in a graveyard is really big for this kind of a format. Finding a Delve creature with this seems really crazy good. Yeah, or just finding like one of your bombs and having Delve cards in your hand. Yeah. And this is going to enable a lot of your, like, your dig through time combos and, and all of your big spells. So like your Delve cards you want an enabler to, and I think this is a great one. So instead of more pass out -y, it's sort of like you could probably... Seven through nine. Seven through nine. Yeah, I was like, I don't really want to say like it's going to table every time, but this it is might. a card that you're going to hope to table sometimes. Yep. Like you're going to remember it's in your pack. You've got a couple delve cards. You need more enablers, and you're hoping it comes back from your opening pack. Yep. See the unwritten. You know, 
if Eldrazi are actually in this block, maybe. Please, no. Wizards, don't. Maybe. I don't like playing with Eldrazi. Eldrazi's are sweet. They're too sweet. God, I they love just it. kill people. Rise of the Eldrazi was the best, one of the best limited sets of all time. It was really good limited. Well, this card, really this, this makes me think there has to be um, Eldrazi or some big monsters coming out because mm -hmm. the creatures that we have right now do not... They're not that great. Like, the best thing you can do is get an Ashen Rider, right? Like, that's yeah. the best thing. Or well, a Hornet Queen. Yeah, I mean, like, when this was first spoiled, like, a friend of mine, you know, came up and was like, hey, what do you think about this card? And I'm like, well, it's very Summoning Trap-esque. But Summoning Trap was an instant, could be played for zero mana, and live in the format with a Primeval Titan. Yeah. If you have Primeval Titan in your format, or a Primeval Titan card, this thing gets a lot more playable, because the reason you had that trap to start with is because it was Primeval Titans number five through eight, mm -hmm. and that's why you wanted to hit them. So if there's not some ridiculously crazy huge bomb that you're just like, that once you resolve it, the game basically ends the next turn, yeah. like in Eldrazi, then you would want this type of card. And if not, it just becomes basically a bulk mythic. So the fact that it has Ferocious really doesn't matter. I mean, you know, like, you if you're playing this type of card, you're, you're looking for a very specific creature. You're looking for, like, one well, dude who is going to kick all the ass. I feel like it has Ferocious for right now as a... They want it to be played right now. I don't think it's going to be a spiky competitive edge card, but I think you can play with it. Play and, with it where? Like, you mean... Well, the reason that you want Ferocious one? is right now you, you want to be able to get two guys... And it's not going to be just ram centric. I think it's just going to be like Polokronos into this, into like Hornet Queen, another big green guy. And then as the format evolves, I think it's just going to be ramping into it to get an Eldrazi or something big. I, just, I mean, it's a huge effect. Like if you have a big guy in play, or let's say you go Nissa and make a four four, and then right. next turn you play this card and you get like a Hornet Queen and a Polokronos, like the game is over. Yeah, I mean, I understand it has a lot of blowout potential. I'm just saying that like you know, ultimately it's a six mana sorcery. That may whiff. It's very low chance. That's why there's yeah. eight cards, but it could whiff. You know, it has a ferocious ability, which is basically gravy, and there's no creature like a primeval titan where it's like, you know, your entire deck is built around resolving this dude. Yeah. You know, like your deck is not built around resolving Pelucranos. Pelucranos is a good card. It's great at killing people and whatnot. But it's not like Pelucranos makes this deck tick. It's like, no, yeah. it's just a good dude. I mean, in Primeval an Titan deck. was busted because you got value even if they killed it. But I think going into the new standard format, Hornet Queen is going to be good, but it needs a home. And I think like a deck that has a home for Hornet Queen might have a home for Celia and Renton. I mean, you know, the fact that you have Nykthos and you have Devotion running around and there's lots of mana symbols on green cards, like, this could not be as unplayable as it kind of looks on the surface. Mm -hmm. But again, until I see something that is like, you resolve it and the game is over, I'm pretty yeah. skeptical. It's also a card that you don't want to build around for the fact that uh, it gets worse in multiples mm. because you just have more in your deck. So yeah. like, Two I of these are open in hand is like the yeah. actual worst. I, I could see like a one of in green ramp decks just as like, it, quarter calling we already figured out isn't that good. Yeah. In in new standard, uh, so I could see like one of this being all right. Like I I couldn't, you know I could justify it just for the fact that somebody's just like, well I do all these cool things and I'm like I can't argue. I probably am afraid of you casting this card against me. Right. It's not like you can't be afraid of it. Or it doesn't do something powerful. It's just that like, it's it's not it's not summoning trap. Yeah. It's just not. Smoke teller. You know what he tells? Smoke. Uh. Are you done yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's telling smoke. What does that even mean? Like, okay. Like, he's just a bear. Like, that secondary ability is hilarious. Like, the secondary ability is going to be way more relevant than you think because a teamer deck doesn't have much time to screw around, right? Well, they need to have their stuff. And if they have extra mana, you can look at morphs. That's really good. And bears are really good. So, the, I think that this card is like a premium two drop. Well, it's premium that it basically like a bears are good, two mana two twos are good, and it has an upside that is fine. It's not like oh my god, great upside. It's like it's a cool mana sink. It lets yeah. the Sultai and the teamer decks like you know figure out what's going on ultimately. And I gotta tell you, as a in Legacy, I've I've been starting to play like Infect, but more importantly, Probe. Mm -hmm. And I just love saying the phrase, "Let me see what you're working with." I just <laughs> love it. I just you're like all right, let me take a look. All right, cool. That's 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 interesting. <sighs> I just love it. I love getting it free information. Free information is awesome. And if you don't have to pay anything for it, which I could see playing this card in a deck that doesn't even run blue because it's just a bear and right. bears are good in a more format. Right. Like this is a very good ability. And the green two drops are just phenomenal in the set, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean they're really good. Don't get me wrong. It's a fine card. I'm just making fun of like telling smoke or whatever. She I just thought you were gonna hit me in the face. Well, I mean, I could just do that. You know, I just I'm not a bear. You gotta stick your tongue I'm out. I'm not a bear. 
It's awesome. <laughs> Soltai Flayer. Ooh, he flays. <laughs> He's such a weird card. He's a like, player. another card, when I'm looking at one of the first time I'm looking at this card, I'm like, this set is so weird. It's just strange. Like, it's a 3 4 for 4, which is great stats when it or another one of your creatures dies, but Game it's tough. But it's like, I understand that this is not a teamer card. But right. it feels like one because it's big, but it's obviously it doesn't feel like one because it doesn't ferocious. But sure. it's just a weird that like this whole like green thing is about like your creatures when they have four power and they die, and this one's like four toughness. Yeah, and, it's like well, Sultai kind of wants to like push the the graveyard like toughness yeah. death aspect, and then Teamer is about the power and ferocious yeah. and pumps and things, and like I don't know, it just it kind of looks really weird. I think it's still a great card like in terms of limited. Oh, it's Awesome. It's super powerful. I mean, you know, four mana three fours are never bad. Um, but, you know, ultimately it's just, I don't know. These are where you want to gain your life and live in it, by the way. You want your guys when they, like, die or when, like, a good guy has it attached to it. Yep. Like, you don't want to be, it's just a free roll. You just sure. want it, you know. Yeah, well, there's that weird vampire thing there you could sack a creature and then it drains to if there's yeah. toughness four or more or whatever. And this kind of a card goes well with that, you know, and sort of stalemates. But, you know, a three, four for four is just solid. It's good. good. It's playable. It's awesome. Teamer Charger. Every single one of the morphs that reveal for just a colored card are amazing. Yeah. Every one. They're I, just great. I mean, I almost want to, like, potentially play this in Constructed. Just because, like, well, green aggressive decks don't really have a lot to work with. Uh, well, that's why when there was that like, mono green aggro or whatever, it was playing, like, Brush Strider. Yeah. And you're like, Brush Strider? And it's like, Brush Strider with a free morph. I man. mean, you also had Experiment 1. Well, yeah. Of course. I mean, you had good one drops and things, but you know, either way, uh, I love this this card. I love the fact that you can unmorph it for just a green card. It gives a special bonus on top of that. Like it's super crazy playable in anything green ever. It's awesome. Yeah, very good. Super, super good. And it's a horse. Horse, of course. I was waiting on it. Here you go. Trail of Mystery. This card is going to be really sweet and limited. This is going to be like one of the really cool build around me's and limited that yeah. you don't like. It's too good to be uncommon. Oh, this card is going to be awesome for the fact that like you you can play a bunch of off color morphs, but just play like one of the off color ones, and you can just go search for them. Yep, go get that basic land yeah. card, reveal it, and you get like you know free card advantage basically just for playing morphs, which is which is amazing. I mean, you know, getting the free bonus is awesome too. Yep. This to me reads like a weird uncommon that was so good they just bumped it. It could have been. It's also a card that I don't think you want all the games to revolve around. Like we. Well, like, that's the why they it, bumped yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like because it would totally be about yeah. resolving the trail of mystery and getting the extra lands and then just starting like unmorphing everything because you. And have then you all play the all the multicolored ones, so then all the like you get the value off of all of the flip for just revealing. Oh, yeah. But you play all the weird ones, that like, <laughs> and you're just like, flip gets bonuses, flip gets bonuses. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a card that I will first pick. And uh, just wrap around it. Yeah, just, like, I don't know certain... if I would just all in at a really high level competitive yeah. tournament, but if I, I will take it no matter what on Moto. Like, I yeah. just have some fun. Yeah. And a casual fun draft, like this is the card you want first pick, first pack, because you're like, cool, I get to like draft yeah. the morph deck. That's awesome. So that's really cool. Uh, Tusk Colossodon. Colossodon. Look, man, Crawworm, you're done here. Yeah, meet your, yeah, eat your heart out. Crawworm, we're done. We're just finished with you as yeah. a magic card. You ain't coming back because even when we're vanilla, we're six fives. Yeah. <laughs> we're just all done here, you know? Yep. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is a great card. I mean, in limited, you're going to have it. It's going to be playable and sealed. It's going to be a little bit worse in draft because it's so, so expensive, essentially, and you can build a mana curve easier there. But you know, GG Crawler. It's big. It's it's. There's a lot of uh, four powered creatures in this format, so this mm -hmm. like gets above it all. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I see this card being at the top of a lot of curves and exactly what you want. Like I think it's actually going to see a lot of play. Yeah, I mean, you know, the fact that it's a six five. That's that's important. Mm -hmm. Now look. I mean, I'm lamenting about the Crawworm, don't get me wrong. But in a set that's built around four power, it certainly makes a lot of development sense that this card is a 6-5 and not a 6-4, mm -hmm. which is sweet. Windstorm. Hey, a reprint. It is a reprint. It's a very Ooh, good one. It's uh, good. This is going to help your decks when they have a bunch of flyers. You can just kill them all. Yeah, it's weird. Do, we, do you main deck something like this? No. Because I'll main deck a Plummet. But I was I about to bring up Plummet. And I was like, well, you it main deck own, Plummet. Yeah. yeah. I don't hit Windstorm because my deck will probably have a flyer or two, mm -hmm. and I don't want to blow them all out, and Plum is just cheaper and more efficient. And and at the same time, like, Windstorm can make you lose games where Plummet wouldn't. Like, they play a flyer, right? And you're like, well, what if they have more? 
I guess I'm going to have to wait on them. <laughs> and then you wait, and they never play one, and you took like six damage. Like, all right, fine, blow it. But if it's a plummet in your hand, they play fire. Like, kill it. Dead. And and Die. it's so funny how that works. And like, it doesn't <laughs> matter what level you are as a magic player. Right. Like, there's a lot of games where a plummet will win more than a windstorm, even if they have multiple flyers in their deck. Right. Like, right. Because that plummet was what you needed at the time, or you yeah. had your own flyer and you couldn't have played a windstorm. Or you didn't have enough mana to kill it with a windstorm. Mm -hmm. All that type of stuff. It's not a card you're going to be picking in any way, like close to high. No. It's going to be like tabled at best. Like some of this stuff just because because it's just not very powerful. It looks really good. It looks powerful. It rarely works out that way. No. You know, it's just like, I wish this was a plummet. And you will too. Uh, Seek the Horizon. Hey, with, with an, another reprint. Infinitely better art. Yeah, oh my god, art is sweet. so good. It's like, it's so wasted on a Seek the Horizon because just don't play this card. It's really bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's, it's like, pretty, it was bad the first time it and bad. it's bad now. Like, I don't care if your deck has three different types of colors in it. Just don't play this card. You don't want to pay four mana to draw three lands. Like, I understand that it fixes you, but build a better mana base. Or don't be so <laughs> greedy. If you need this because your mana base is bad, your deck yeah. is bad. Gross. All right. Tusk Guard Captain. We're back to the good solid creatures. Three mana for you, two threes. They're getting trampled. Isn't it's it sweet awesome. that, like... Three mana, two threes were so generic in other sets, and now they're uncommon worthy. Oh, no, I mean, and now we're like, ability, yeah. Right? Like, they have an ability, but yeah. Well, we're getting so excited because, like, yes, they can block morphs. Yay. That's terrific. I Box mean, morphs gets to be cheap outlast, uh, cheap and efficient. Three three drop outlasts are going to be better than four drops. Yep. Um, and I think, like, the best outlast cards are going to cost three mana and only cost one to activate. Yes. The cheaper the outlast cost, the better the card yeah. is, basically. And this is just one of the best. Like, this card is super good. It's going to be great. You just you draft it high. You play it always. Like it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's hard to say. There's anything wrong. This card it does everything. Wooly Loxodon. He's not just a Loxodon. He's Wooly. I love it. It's a little bit more expensive. Got some toughness, but you can morph it early and then flip it over on the turn that you cast the the um, the Mox Mosted. What, what? Oh, the Terra Mosodon or everything. Yeah. Anyway, yes, it's bigger than the six Colossodon. five. It's the Colossodon. Colossodon. Yeah. That's a great name. Um, but, you know, a 7-mana 6-7, six, seven, like, if you're just ripping it, you know, empty board, great. And if not, like, this is what you put down turn 3, no problem. Turn it up later. It's absolutely huge. It will win the game for you. It triggers Ferocious. It's awesome. Yeah. I also feel like this is the card. This is actually locks it on Hierarch. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, like, like got forgotten about and left alone in the cold, and now he doesn't care about anyone anymore. Right. So they, like, stuck him in the freezer and forgot. And, like, yeah. Sorry, dude. And he was like, Rrr. and now he's, like, mad. Yeah, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Exactly. Avalanche Tusker. A 5-mana 6-4. You know, here's our Crawl Worm. He's a little yeah. bit cheaper because he's harder to cast. And, you know, this guy makes things die, which is yeah. awesome. He forces blocks. And because he has such a high power, you can make like a 3-3 three, three block. Mm -hmm. But they might not have a creature. They want to double block, but you'll just get the 2-for-1. Right. And that's that's fine. You force a 2-for-1, right? They're not just going to want to chump block. But they're probably not going to have a creature big enough because uh, you get to pick a guy. Right, right. They're not going to have another guy big enough to block and live to tell the tale, so you're right. going to get the two for one, and that, that's why this card is awesome. Yeah, but that's why it's really rare, ultimately, because yeah. like this this card is super powerful and limited, and you wouldn't want to see this in Uncommon. You don't want to see multiples of this card. No. It's just super powerful. So, you you know, you're going to basically get two for one. If your opponent plays this against you, you're like, all right, jeez. Yep. You know, like, they're not going to pick a card that's going to one for one, you know? And in that case, you're already at two for one. Bear's Companion. This is my favorite card of the set. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's just like a 2-2 two -two for 5, but you get a 4-4, four -four, so you get 6-6 six -six for 5 power. Or six power for five uh, mana. Yep. And you get two different lives. That's the most important thing because, like, now you can keep your 4-4 four -four round and trade off the 2-2 two -two body. If you ever get to bounce it or blink it, you get another bear. It's a bear that brings a bear. And it makes a 4-4 four -four bear token. It makes and that bear. makes me happy. Yeah, man, it's bears are two twos. No, bears are four fours. Bears are two twos. That's a big bear. I don't think that... It, I think... Look, man, somebody sent me the mock-up, and you can find it on my Twitter at Mr. Orange, where... Uh, they put in the brave characters in this, and they have you know the brave yeah. the the redheaded girl and her mom when she's a bear, which is really cool. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, super awesome. So that's Bear's Companion, which yep. is really sweet. Um, and funny enough, actually, a lot of brave characters look really good in Teamer. Like, yeah. it's just sort of <laughs> built for their for the way their landscape looks. Uh, but ultimately, this card is good. It's not like super crazy powerful. It's not as good as the the Avalanche Tusker guy we just spoke of here. 
Um, but it's not meant to be. You know what I mean? Like ultimately, it's six power over two guys and eight t- or six toughness over two guys, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I, not like oh my god, windmill slam this thing. It's super like, spiky. Oh, I actually like Bear's Companion a little bit more for the fact that. I like my cards to be able to be in situations where I know I'm not going to die. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm not going to play a guy and it's going to die right away. Like, I get value out of this guy. So he get, he has a lot of play to him, and, I, and that's why I really like this card. Absolutely. So, super playable. It's just not like, oh my god, i got to build my draft around this guy. It's just like, oh sweet, I'm in Teamer, and this is like the Teamer card I want. Yep. That's great. Uh, Ice Feather Aven, this card is awesome. This card super is so awesome. good. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 when you want it, and it has flying, and it starts attacking, but later in the game you can morph it and flip and bounce. Oh, it's, it's, it's terrific. Like, this it is, is the card I want to play with just because I want to play with it. Like, it's just, it's so good, it's efficient. Uh, it's as pushed as a card like this could possibly be. Oh, it's so good. Like, it's morph, and it's mana war, and it's got evasion. It's close enough to where I kind of want to think about playing it in Constructed. I don't know, man. I wouldn't... It's just too tiny. It's a little small, but it's just so good. It's just, oh. This card is terrific. It's just going to do all the work for you. You're just going to love everything this card does for you. Yep. If you are anywhere near Sultai or Teamer, for God's sakes, always play this thing. Mm-hmm. It will be fantastic. Yep. Every time. Draft it early. Love it. Yeah! Big Nux, what's up? Nug Nug. What, what? <laughs> yeah, this card is amazing. Oh, my God. It was like, you know, well, all right, so we're going to make this, like, cycle, and everyone's going to have, like, this, like, key rare that's great, and they just, like, pedal to the floor on this thing. Wow. Yeah, it, wow. It's, it's good. Good hell, this thing is amazing! This thing is amazing. You know it. I know it. Amazing. It's just, like, green into colors, colon, cray. Blue into colors, colon, cray. Red, cray. I do, I do like that it works really, really well with Knuckleblade. Or not Knuckleblade. That's him. Um, it works really well with Mana and the, the Red Zone. The Morph guy. What's his name again? The one we just looked at? Yeah. The, no, 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 no. The, the Mana guy. Mystic. Oh, the Rattleclaw. Rattleclaw Mystic. Yeah, it works this really is like, good. That's what these two Dude, cards, yeah. like, they live together. They're hanging out. The Holy Matrimony, man. Like, it's hard to build a deck that has A that doesn't say, like, B would be really good with it because it totally would. My biggest problem with decks like this is I don't know how they come back from behind. And that's the problem with Teamer, and that's the problem with this card. Well, you give it haste, and then you pump it. Well, I understand that. I'm saying when you're on the draw and construct it. Now, obviously, yep. unlimited, it's insane. It's um, unlimited thing is super crazy magic yeah. nuclear bomb. You know, but that, that I feel like I feel like Teamer is going to be the same as like John Monsters was, where it feels really good and when it's on the play it's unbelievably broken. Like but when, when it's, it's super the, powerful. But it's when it's amazing. on the draw you fall behind and you're trying to play catch up and you're like never being able to break parity and, and or break serve and like that's that's the issue I have. And so Savage Knuckle Blade I think is an awesome card. I'm probably gonna eat these words, but right now it's not a card I want to play in constructive. Not I. I want to play against it actually. I was gonna say, like, you think you ready to pie this thing? No, of course not. It's going to see Lord Almighty, I'd pirate this thing in no, four ways gonna, Sunday. No, it's going to see a lot of play. It's going to be double to nothing. No, of course. It's going to see a lot of play. I think I'm, I'm calling this the card that I die to the most in the format. Huh. Well, good, because it's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's it's crazy. It's yeah. top five cards in the set. I mean, that's obvious. It's, yeah. it's really pushed. It's got, the abilities are insane. Like, it's a controls worst nightmare. The more lands, and the reason that this is good is because it's a mana sink. Yes. And mana sinks are going to be good and constructed. Yep. Uh, because there isn't a lot of them. And they and give so, you three different mana sinks. Yeah, late game, you're going to, like, control decks, like, when you draw this at, like, seven or eight lands, like, a control deck can't beat it. Like, because there's, like, kill it, and then you're, like, bounce it, and you're, like, the best The best thing you do is kill it again. Right. And But it's a two for one. And, and your opponent's, like, all right, whatever. Sure. You know, this card is going to be good late game. The problem, the, all right, so if you're building a teamer deck. All right, <clears throat> I'm building a teamer deck. I do. I would not play this card with Xenagos. I don't think that they, they play well together. Why not? Because they're... You, then you're forced to play your knuckle blade aggressive. Xenagos needs to keep the throttle going. I think you have to find the best way to interact with your well, opponents. You're not always going to have both of them in your hand. Well, but that's but that's not it. Your deck doesn't have. You need to have a lot of removal to make these decks valuable, in my opinion. I think you're going to need to find a way to interact with your opponent. Yep. Well, Xenagos and knuckle blade are really good, but you have to interact with your opponent. Yeah, I, I interact with their face, with my fist. Yeah, <laughs> with my knuckles. Snowhorn Rider is a 5-5 trampler that unmorphs for 5. This is the teamer awesome unmorph guy. For common, yeah. For common. He's really good. I mean, you know, I don't know what else to say. Like, you pick him highly. 
you play him always. He's great. If you're in this color combination, you're playing this yeah, guy. Yes, this is the morph that you want really yeah. badly. Right. There's there's no question. There's no arguments. It's yeah, just, it's a five-five trample. Just love it. Great it's, stats. Trample's really good in Magic right now. Lord, yes, it is. It is fantastic. Sir Dragon Claw, what, what? Ooh. What? The card is amazing. Do you know what I want to do most with this card? Beat someone to death with yeah, it? That's true, but I also <laughs> want to block. <laughs> I want, sir. You want to block? What is no, wrong no. with you, dude? No, the, you know, do you know what this card does best? Beat the hell out of somebody. That's what this card does best. What are you saying? What are you Girl, talking yeah, about? Of course, it's insane. Great. Wow. It but doesn't need to block. It just at, needs to kill people. He's the guy that punched the bear too, right? Like, Yo, yeah, he, he is. is. And, he, and, it's and then he his, wore yeah. the damn thing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's right. Deal with it. No, I mean, all right, you're gonna get behind this. Woo! You're gonna get behind this. Yeah, I am. You're an aggressive opponent. I'm already behind it. All right. Hell, I'm in front of it, over it, <laughs> under it. Or, I mean, you know. Think of this it. though. This is you're gonna love to do this though. You're gonna get all a right. little. Let's. I'm gonna teach you how to be a blue teamer player. Right. All right. So you're gonna have five mana, okay. and your opponent's gonna be like, "Ah, oh, man, he's got Sir Dragon Claw." Yeah. I guess I'm just gonna have to play this hasty and attack with everything and try to get through it, right? Right. And then you go Aether Spouts. Because this works so good with Aether Spots, right? Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How can you not get behind that? I'm behind that! But when you're over here like, Sir Dragon Claw, can't wait to block. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's this is not a card that says I want to block things. This card says I want to be facing things. Well, you haven't played enough standard. Blocking is so important. You have to you have to learn how to be on defense. I don't want to be face. I don't care about defense. You know what the best defense is? A good Sir Arc Dragon Claw. That's that is, what it is. I know. That's why I want to block with it. Our argument's over, I guess. He, he solved it for me. Teamer Ascendancy is interesting. <laughs> it's not good. I mean, is this any? Is this good in? I mean, it's good and limited, right? Creatures no. have haste. I mean, I mean, getting to draw cards is sweet, but you're not going to have that many guys, and it, it takes two to replace it. And haste is actually insane and limited. It uh, is. It just changes the game. Like hammer was good, but the thing was, his hammer had flooding protection, right? Yeah, and you could like make three threes, and that was sweet. And the other half of it is like a lot of the really cool team cards, a lot of the really powerful stuff. They're all morphs. Yes, that's the issue and with this, this format. Punishes you for playing morphs. Yeah, and that's weird. Yeah, team ascendancy is the worst one in my opinion. It's going to have no impact in constructed because if like the the thing about teamer cards is. They're already designed over the course of the last year and a half mm -hmm. to be very good against control X. And right. this is the anti control card. Right. So like why do you need cards to go along with your Xenagoses and your knuckle blades and it's your just Sir Claws? A like, bunch of stuff you don't need. Yeah, it's just extra. It's it's overkill against a, against the matchups you don't care about. Like what you what you need to care about are the removal based decks, the really aggressive decks, like the decks that can get under you. Right. Um, and this does not help you in any way, shape, or form. And this card them. just does nothing on the board. It affects absolute zero. Maybe if you play something after it that can trigger it, it's nice. I mean, that's what all of them do, right? Like they all. Well, they, the Obzon gives counters to everything immediately. But but that's like yeah, of course it doesn't in interact with the cards that are already present. Sure. That, sure. That, that makes sense that that's bad. Right. I'm just saying, like ultimately, just there's you, there's, you want to do everything else than this at this mana cost at this time in a game. Yeah, not not happy about it. But the charm, however, is also is pretty weak. Pretty not I mean it's like the weakest charm, but like, yeah. you know, it can still kill a thing and it's still got mana leak and Yeah, it's got like like, you know. It's got three relevant abilities, but they all need like something to be happening and that's the problem with with this charm in my opinion. Yeah. Is none of them really fight from behind? Right. And uh, you see all the other charms, they can fight from behind, they do. They interact with no board presence. And right. because it's Teamer, and Teamer's all about board presence, this one needed a board presence. So like, this is the tempo charm, yeah. and that's that's really what, I guess that's that's why. Teamer would be unbelievable if they put something on here that was reactive, right, in a sure. game of Magic. Like, it's pure, full throttle, push to the, push to the limits. But I played a Teamer deck, and when I fell behind, I had no way to come back, and I had charm, in a lot of games in a versus video against Todd, right. and it didn't do anything. It did nothing. You know, it's just like uh, it's like I didn't have a guy to fight with. Their 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 pressure was already on the board. Right. Obviously, so the third ability was irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, because when that third ability just kind of automatically gets blanked when you ain't got any creatures out, and then the first one gets blanked when you don't have any creatures out, and then the second one's like, well, I hope they play something because everything that's already on the board is killing me. Yeah, it's not good. 
Yeah, so this is uh, a charm that is going to be good in limited just because it's a counter spell. It's it, it's probably one of the best in limited. In limited, you're going to love it. It has the most blow up potential all three ways. Right. Like they're like big bomb. You're like counter, and you're like oh sweet. You, none of your guys can block attack you. Right. Which is fine. You know, and you know I can fight this guy and kill this guy. So that's that's fine. But you have like you know when you have a tempo card and you don't live in a world where that tempo works all the time every time then it gets to be a lot worse. Yep. Then it gets to be situational. And if it's situational, then it gets a little suspect. And then we're a team or charm. Yep. Man. Trap Essence. Now Ooh. this is a Ooh. sweet counter spell. They pushed this one a little. Not a lot, but a little. Yeah, it, it, it it's a little slightly pushed. It's the, the only problem that I have with this is I feel like I feel like it's a cop out charm for the fact that it's it's teamer, but it's it's uh, it's Obzon at the same time because you get the counters. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know, Obzon should not be the only thing that has counters to, well, for relevancy. But right. this also tr triggers Ferocious if you need it. Like. Yeah, I mean, it helps do that. I mean, like you know, Essence Scatter was always playable and limited because you know you kind of just you're playing creatures versus creatures. That's what's yeah. happening. You're not worried about like these crazy huge spells to blow you out versus just like this monster that that tra that tromples you. But like Trap Essence being very very difficult to. To play because of the mana cost, and then if you don't have a creature, it's still okay. It's yeah. just like oh, it mean, feels like almost like a constructed card that's not good enough, and a limited card that's so difficult to play. I mean, I it's kind of it, stuck in the yeah. middle. It's it's a it's fine and limited. I don't think it's going to see constructed play. No. And uh, and after that, yeah, like it's it's okay. I mean, it's never going to be a first pick. Like this is not a this is should not put you in teamer. This no. is a. This is a card that rewards you of being in teamer later in the draft. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get this probably mid, you know, fourth to seventh or whatever yeah. it is. And, you know, you should take it if you're teamer. You know, like, this mm -hmm. is not a bad spell by any means, and you're going to be able to counter probably a good relevant creature with yeah. it. But, you know, it's not something that you're like, oh, sweet, I can't wait to cast a spell. Or like, oh, man, I picked the right clan. And like, no, not really. Let's you just got say a you're decent not high-fiving anyone. Right, you got a decent card that may sometimes be way too difficult to play. Yeah. Blech. Teamer Banner. Yeah. The Banner. I don't the know. Yeah, it's, the it's, it's the it's What I like about so what I like about the banners, run our last one here. What I liked about the banners is that all of the banners include all of the colors of their tribe in there somewhere. There's, you see the little green emeralds right there at the bottom? Oh, really? I missed those the first time. Oh. Because what was really like, and this was pointed on Reddit, you know, because I, I browsed the MTG subreddit, and, uh, you know, they were like, look at all the banners, and like, Teamer doesn't have its colors, and someone was like, yeah, it does. Like, it's got the green, huh. and it's got the blue of the sky and stuff. And the red and, is the, and the, the claw. Yeah, and the red's actually, that's blood. It's a yeah, blood splatter, yeah. you know? Which is cool. So, yes, it would be a bit dark because it's on cloth. So, I think that's really cool. At the end of the day, it's just like all the other banners. They're good and limited. You'll play them. You'll draw cards You'll off of them. You'll sometimes play them. I, I do not think they're a must-include. Not every deck is going to have a banner. They're they're almost auto-includes and sealed. They're not quite that way in draft. Yeah. Put it like that? That's that's true. I think that's fair. All right. Frontier Bivouac. We get to learn Bivouac. Bivouac. Is that a real car? Or oh, a real, that's a, a real, real can yeah. you Can you educate me? Yeah, it's, some education. It's uh, it's it's a like it's, it's what you see. It's like a um, it's a make form housing on a in some sort of frontier landscape. Uh, I know it's a real word because there's a YouTube video that showed me how to pronounce it. <laughs> Bivouac, because I need that because I'm a redneck. Um, <laughs> it's true, and uh, from the south. Um, so anyway, I love saying bivouac, so I'm just gonna say bivouac, bivouac, frontier bivouac, 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 bivouac. bivouac, bivouac. It's the, you, this is the whack, worst. Whack. This is the worst tri land, not limited, but unconstructed for the fact that it's the color that needs the tempo, right? Like I feel like you're gonna see like other uh, wedges be played and constructed, and they're gonna love their tri land. Well, I mean, you know, I guess it depends on how much you feel Jeskai is ultimately, you know, kind of tempo. I feel that Jeskai is a little bit more tempo than Teamer because Teamer is more like well, I think, smash your I face think, in and Jeskai is about like working the edges and casting the counter spells and working <coughs> with prowess and all this other stuff. Prowess is not really a constructed play. Well, not necessarily, but I'm just saying like that's they're 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 tricksy. They're tricksy. Yeah. And so like, you know, Teamer can kind of be like tempo-ish, but I mean, it's all about big man and you already have uh Radical Mystic and Sylvan Carotid to get you all your colors. Yeah. So like you're gonna want to just be more like forests and fetch lands and pain lands. Sure. And uh, I mean, like the the version of a deck that I have for a versus video uh, that we're gonna be filming next week, 
I don't even have a tap land in, in my three-color deck. I'm just like, I'm going to try it. Like, Well, I'm, again, I mean, see what happens. I certainly understand that, you know, I agree that they've kind of pushed this as the teamer clan, or I'm yeah. sorry, as the, um, the tempo clan, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's actually going to get there as the tempo clan versus something else. But either way, it's probably good enough for constructed. We'll see. Oh, I mean, it, it might be. It might be. It's definitely good enough and limited, just like all the oh, rest. All you you always good. play it every single time, not close. And I love the word bivouac. Bivouac. All right, so they made a brand new cycle. You know, could they not just have reprinted the ones from Invasion? Were they were the were the words were the land names really that bad? Well, I don't think like they were coastal tower and all other stuff. But there's no elves and stuff. Well, no, they couldn't reprint because it adds the adds yeah, the one elvish life. Never mind. Well, a they couldn't reprint the Zendikar ones because they were all very specific to Zendikar. Yeah. So they couldn't re going back to like the Akoam Refuge mm -hmm. and stuff. And so for these, they had to give them new names. So instead of Akoam Refuge, we have Bloodfelt Caves which is nice and generic, which means they're ideally supposed to be putting them in core sets later, but that was the same reasoning we got when they called, you know, the Celestia land uh, Temple Garden, but, you know, just because the Shocklands have nice generic names doesn't mean they're going to be included in base sets. Yeah. So, but uh, how, how playable are these things? Now, Unlimited, they're 100% playable just like the You're going to play a lot of these, actually, um, just because you need your mana... Uh, to to be fixed and uh, yeah and they're common and that's great if you're in two of these colors you you know auto pick it if you're in one of these colors but can splash for yeah. the third for the fourth one you know and like maybe some really cool morph and and, worth it. and that's what this format's uh, gonna have like uh, you're gonna have decks that have a ton of tap lands mm -hmm. and so there's gonna be two color decks that have less powerful cards but they're working off tempo sure and that's gonna be a big tension thing so like uh, get a feel for what's happening in your drafts. Uh, and sometimes you're just going to try to be the two color, super aggressive. Uh, you're, you know, even if your opponent knows you're aggressive, what are they going to do? They still have all these tap lines and all these colors that they drafted. Yeah. Um, but these cards are super playable in constructed. Uh, the black ones are going to be better than all the other colors. Why? Um, well, because they they're life gain and they're and you want your mana to be good and you're playing like thought seasons and stuff. Okay. So you can just go like temple or you can go like this gain a life untap. Now you know what's happening, you know your next draw, you go Thought Seize them, now you know what, all what's up, and then you play your Temple. Okay. And that's going to be a play that's going to happen a lot. So, like, the, hmm. the blue-black one and the black-white one are probably the two most valuable and constructed. Sure. Uh, because they're Thought Seize decks. Right. And uh, a lot of the aggressive color ones are probably not going to see that much play, just because Temples are going to be better. Yeah, you know, Dismal Backwater. Hmm. It's going to be good. Uh, it's mu It's much like uh, the Scars and Mirror Lands when they came out. We thought they were going to be, like, like... We didn't know where they went, and they were just aggressive lands, right? Because they're oh, dual Lord, lands that came into play. So awesome. But they made for such good aggressive decks. Yes. Uh, but these ones, because they're valuable uh, for more slower control decks, mm -hmm. like they're great. I've already played with uh, the black white one in my black white mid range deck, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I have two. Uh, I might go back up to three. It just works. Yeah, scouring barons. Scoured, scoured barons. barons. Sweet. It, it's also sweet art. Uh, this mm -hmm. one I think is going to see a lot of play. Same with the blue black one. Hmm. Uh, for the two color control decks, because you want to cast a lot of like cards that cost double, like like you want sign and bloods, you want thought seizes, but you also probably want some counter spells or you want some bremazes right. and and wingmate rocks and stuff like that. So that's cool. Yep, yeah, they're gonna see a lot of play. Um, I like them. even the blue red one. I think Karanos. Do you know that Karanos is the second most expensive card uh, on Moto for standard, like the new like going into new standard. Well, actually, oh. just in standard right now because all the other cards are losing value. Karanos right. is super expensive. Because I think it's going to be good in standard. I think a lot of people think it's going to be good in standard. I don't know if it's going to be good in standard. Let's put it that way. I think there's going to be like a uh, Jeskai control deck that can uh, maybe Teamer. I mean, I, Knuckle Blade with a uh, eh, with Karanos. Eh? I mean, that, that little is, face, a little Surikar. You eh? really like going aggressive, don't you? Yeah, I do. Ah, attack, smash, destroy, everything. Yeah. I mean, like Mono Red is cool and Ravel Master is cool, but like. You know, like Tom Ross has just got that, like, just he's, just, he's, sort, of, he's sort of just solved it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, he's like, here's the mono red deck. It's as good as it's going to get. It's great. It won the open, like, last week when, as we're recording this. Like, you know, it's, oh, it's it fantastic. Oh, it did win. It did, yeah. Okay. And, so uh, you know, her, the deck is fan freaking tastic. Rabble so, like, Burn's such a good deck. Yeah, so, like, I'm ready for Cons and Tarkir Standard. I want these clans to shine. I want these really good cards in these clans to shine. And not just be, like, you know, the previous format minus Sphinx's Revelation and everything else is more or less the same. You know, so that's what, that's my hope. So oh, I mean, Kronos is good, high five. At least yeah, it's different. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Kronos with Faded Retribution is going to be good because you got to kill everything. So I think I think there's going to be a Jeskai Control deck with that as like a win condition because it becomes, 
such a good win. You don't need a lot of threats. Oh, yeah. Part, it just wins you by just, itself. You just get the Sphinx's Revelation inevitability where you just keep getting gas. Right. It's probably the best inevitability that exists in the format after Sphinx's Revelation. For sure, life. yeah. Especially yeah. since it lives through Faded Retribution. And right. you just blow all the things up Woo. at instant speed. Digging it. So... Also, oh, wow. Coil. What? Wow, I just what? thought about it. Oh, what? Oh, wow. This is how what? I brew, and I know we're at the end of the video, but they're going to want to hear you can just activate your Sarkin and then Faded Retribution or play a Wrath effect or something. Well, the Wrath is, is relevant. You can right. turn on your Sarkin and then Faded Retribution so you can keep your Sarkin alive because now it's indestructible. Oh, it is indestructible. Yeah, it? that's so cool. There, that's awesome. That's so cool. There, that's so sweet because it's just like right there and becomes indestructible. Yeah, so you have that's to activate amazing. it and then blow it. And then your Elspeth, you can just go... Uh, make three guys in response faded, right? And then you get to keep your three guys if you have to blow stuff up. I like it. Wow, I'm gonna build a, I'm gonna build that control deck now. That's gonna be so cool. I love it. Tranquil Cove uh, is illustrated by John Avon, who is an absolute master and is awesome. And he's a really cool guy too. He's a super cool guy. Yeah. I've interacted with him multiple times, and he's awesome. Wind scarred crag is scarred by the wind. Wind scarred. Now here's Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. Now again, I'm just saying. Would not be surprised with Eldrazi in the third set. For God's sake, they're hinting at it like crazy. They're like, this block is about time travel. Does Obzon has the Zendikar symbol right in the friggin' middle of it. Like, you know, like I mean, they're we also get the it. like the when they want to sell magic cards, they make big Eldrazi's. We already know how much everyone has loved Eldrazi's. You seen the prices of those things? Yeah, they're still huge. Good and, God, and, and they're, they're expensive. Huge casual cards oh, and yeah. and so maybe getting those to come back like. I love the fact, I mean, I remember there was a point where you could literally hard cast Ulamog because it was the only way to for sure get rid of Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like just making a Cardboard Crack uh, comic now where it would just be like, guy walks up, like Arnie walks up to Hasbro and like, you like money? And they're like, yeah, all right. Fetchlands, Eldrazi's Multicolored. Can we do it? Can we do it? Yeah. Next and, panel. Wait, wait. And time travel. Nice. Next panel, in? big gold chains yeah. and the big dollar <laughs> sign and the, you know, the sunglasses and the girls in the arm. Yeah. It'll be great. All right. So Tomb of the Spirit Dragon is a playable land. Like, there's there's basically no harm in this. Like, you would have to stretch your mana base to an extreme amount for this to be completely unplayable. I mean, I would not play it in limited even if I only have a couple more. It's like... Because if I have three colors in my deck, I do not want to play a colorless land. Well, if you have a, like, there's sort of a, a number of morphs that you kind of need to make this not tear bad. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, like, what are you doing just dirtling with all your morphs? Like, you're going to want to flip them over eventually. Like, magic is not. Over. I mean, magic, it's going to, we're going to be hitting each other really hard really fast. Right, right, right. I can do that. Well, but what I'm curious is, magic. could this, could be a cyborg card for affinity against, like, burn or something? I don't think so, but. You want to play this in a multiplayer? All right, so all right, we're done. All right, we're I was done. wrong. You were wrong. We're wrong. We're both wrong. Bloodstained Mire. Yeah, these don't matter. They're not going to see. Yeah, they're not relevant. Okay, no one's going to want to open these. No one wants Bloodstained Mires and Polluted Deltas. And no. Wooded Foothills and whatever. Yeah, they're not relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Wizards. This Thanks, Watsi. You're cool. These lands are amazing. These lands sell the set. Like, if it was just a bunch of blank cards and five fetch lands, the set would still sell. I mean, you know, like... It's just, whiff, whiff, whiff. Yeah, whiff, 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 whiff. Just whiff. like cards that insult you, just like, sucker. It's like, you, you suck, you suck, you suck bad. Fetch land. Makes yeah. you feel good. Fetch... Like, go ahead. Oh, so, Polluted Delta was actually the first card I ever opened and traded immediately for a Silvos. Nice. And I will not be doing that. I will not be making that same mistake. Right. I mean, the, the, yeah, yeah. there's a whole yeah. bunch of cool things that are happening with Fetchlands. Now that we have the complete 10 cycle in Modern, that's really sweet. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were not in Modern until literally cons came out. You could not play with Blessed St. Myers or Polluted Deltas in Modern until this happened. The second part is it makes Legacy even more affordable. Polluted Delta was getting up to like 80 bucks. Yeah. For one copy. That's nuts. So, like, the ability for it actually to be affordable, so you can buy a copy for, I think, 25 or $30 or whatever it is. And also, they're all you dropping, know. like, already. Like, all the lands are coming down, which sure. is great. Because, like, you're going to, you, not only in Modern are you going to be able to play these viable decks with, with basics, because there's a lot of decks that want basics, but sure. you can't get away with them with, with just the enemy fetches. So, uh, getting fetches is awesome. For standard, uh, I just, I hate shuffling. 
Well, for standard, what this does, and the reason they don't like to print fetch lands, and the reason the fetch lands are kind of hated, not hated, but like kind of not loved that much in R&D, yeah. is because it just basically puts loading screens in our game. And loading screens being like, I just get to sit here and watch you shuffle, and then we get to play more magic. And if I just didn't have to sit there and watch you shuffle, I can actually get to play magic. So there's a lot of cards that, you know, and we've seen them in the past where instead of doing something like searching your library for a land or whatever, it'll say something like, look at the top five cards to your library, and pick a land card. Why? Because statistically you're almost guaranteed to hit a land yeah. and it removes the loading screen. So like, yes, these are incredibly powerful. They're super popular. They're amazing. They they, they make the yeah. set super great and it's going to sell a brojillion copies and it's going to be the best selling magic set of all time and yada, yada, yada. But like, you know, it, ultimately it's, there is a downside to all I mean, all it's not going to be that bad either for the fact that uh, they did such a good job at making all the the uh, clan's really powerful mm -hmm. to where you're not, I don't think you're going to see a lot of the off, like the shards, mm -hmm. um, so you can start to play, so you're not going to have like eight fetch land decks. Sure. And so every deck's going to have four, maybe less. Which is nice. Which is fine, and uh, I'm excited to play with them. Uh, another sweet thing with Kranos is that you can like look at the top, and if it's a card you don't want, you can fetch it away. Fetch away, and that's really sweet. Yep. Um, but I think these are going to be uh, really good. They're going to go into all the constructed decks, obviously. But building mana bases is going to be really cool moving forward with temples yep. and tricolor lands and gain life tap lands along with fetch lands awesome. and pain lands. Like, we have too many. To be honest, I wish we had less. Are you about to complain about mana fixing, dude? We have too much. Don't. Don't do it. Oh, that's a bad path, right? That's people love bad. Their, people love their fixing. Every Well, here's the problem. If you don't have enough fixing, it sucks. Like, you'd rather have too much than not enough. And... Like, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with lots of common coming to play tap, dual lands, you know, cap two colors. And there's these lands are awesome. Now, here's the question. The other five fetches in this block or not? Well, they said there's time travel, right? Pi. What? You want to do a pi bet? I think they're in the third set. I think before this block is over, we'll see the Zendikar fetches. They may very well be in the second set. Will they change the clans to do, like, the, the Scars ones? They would have mean? to. I would think that. Well, hey, they. Well, they've already said this is the only wedge set. There's this is it. There's no more like wedge stuff in the second set. It's you know it's about. I mean it's that weird time travel something or other. But they what they what you know but the, what they wanted to do was like this is the wedge set. We went all out. We made all the wedge cards. The wedge cards are sweet. He uses the only wedges because <coughs> with shards they did kind of you know they went too long. And it's the yeah. whole reason they're changing the structure of magic and only having two set blocks anyway yeah. is because the third set's always crap for whatever weird reason. And for Alara Reborn it was because like you know. Do you like multicolor? Well, here's like multicolor to the max. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like they just splurred it all out. It was just like onslaught block, you know, like onslaught block into legions. Then it was like, what do you do next? Creatures to the max. You yeah. know, I'm sorry, it was onslaught and scourge, and then it went into legions. Yeah. And legions was just all creatures, and Alara Reborn was all multicolor. And so you know, like they're they're trying to sort of shake it up a little bit. Sure. Uh, sure. But I'll... they're also they're also trying to complete a cycle. I have to do it. All right. So if they're in the third, if they're in this block. You take a pot. Yeah. In. I'm in. And as with that, we are out of cons of Tarkir. Can you believe it? That was a lot of cards we talked about. That was a whole bunch of cards. There's a lot of talking about those cards, too. Yeah. <laughs> that included crazy stories, and then there's the smoke guy, and there's the dragon punch. This is great. You're just trying to hit me. I don't try to hit you, bro. It hurts me. Do or do not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but seriously, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching us. Yes, thank you so Man, much. Man, how in the world? They watch a lot of our stuff. Well, we don't even, we don't know. Maybe there's no one on the other side There's of no this. one there. Hey, guys, are you our there? Friend, our friends that help us make this just, you know, say that. that, that we're right, right. Like, yeah, we watched the set reviews. Yeah, we watched the set reviews. <laughs> sure. But seriously, thank you so much, guys. You can support this content and more at patreon.com slash magic show. It has all sorts of cool, like, bonuses and benefits and stuff. And I'll send you a play mat if you get to the very tip-top level and all this other cool stuff. But regardless, for Evan Irwin. Brad Nelson. We tapped all the cards. So you didn't have to, except for this weekend when you play in the pre-release. Yeah, you do, and you go kill it with Teamer.